So it's the end of August and I've wanted to do this video for about two months now. I did my last workshop tour about 18 months ago, I think. So obviously I want to give you another tour to show you how things have changed possibly and how the layout's looking with things. Um, but also there's another reason I want to do this now and because in the next few months I'm expecting my circumstances to change in the sense that I'm looking to move home. And the consequence of that is that I'll probably end up somewhere with no workshop at home. I'm limited by what I can afford given my budget and my earnings so I've got to look at this carefully. Self storage is an option for most of my tools but do I want to keep all my tools? Do I need all of my tools? I don't want to give up from woodworking for full stop. I quite look forward to a break actually. I find my life is very busy at the minute, more so than it has been for the last few years and in many ways it's hard to keep woodwork going sometimes or the opposite of that is I can spend too much time woodworking and neglect other things. Maybe that sounds familiar, I don't know. But yeah, I'm going to show you around my workshop now, as it is today, at the end of August. And I'll, as we're going around, I'll show you a few things about um, what I'm thinking of keeping, um, what I'm thinking of selling, that kind of idea really. So starting by the door, as per usual, the first thing you might notice is I put two vents in here. They also double up as spy holes. They're kind of handy for air ventilation, but really I need some more elsewhere in the workshop because damp is an issue. Normally I leave the windows open overnight and that sort of helps to keep the musty smell down a bit. But back over here I've got my, used to be my dad's table, saw so a TKU. I might have found a buyer for this. It's on eBay at the minute and I want it gone. I've had it for almost a year and it's just, it's just too big. A great saw for ripping timber, but it's just way too big. Just look at the space it commands around here, you know. I could actually walk into my workshop without, you know, walking sideways if that was gone. And behind this I have my lathe, which I'd actually quite like to keep. If I got somewhere with a small garage, I'd like to try my hand at a little bit of wood turning, but then I'd also need a bandsaw, I guess, and a pillar drill, and somewhere to sharpen my tools. So maybe it's not the best idea, I don't know. It's a thought at the minute. Um, my disc sander is one I want to sell very soon as well. I've only really held on to it so long because I want to do this video tour, first of all. But it's something I rarely use these days. Um, the main gripe with it is that it's it's the way it operates, funnily enough. It's sort of standing downwards to the table, so any timber you put on there is going to scratch across the grain. Made more use recently of my portable belt sander just clamped to the bench, wherever that is. There it is on the pillar drill. And behind this lot I've got my turning tools. I'd like to try and keep those whatever happens to the lathe because you know you buy them once and maybe start again someday. Um, there were more garden tools than this. Some of them have made their way into the shed unintentionally but um, the the strimmer died after I fixed it so that's one more out of the way. I've lessened my number of MDF and ply off cuts to this amount here, at least in the smaller sheets anyway. Plenty of jigs on the bandsaw, other DIY bits for painting and blah blah blah, all the boring stuff. I've still got this Triton dust bucket down here with my vacuum extractor from Neil Fisk Auto. I made this wooden frame because uh, this thing can be quite lightweight when it's empty and it kind of, sort of tips over sometimes. It's I've kind of done videos about this before and I've mentioned that I, I quite like it but it's not as good as a cyclone system so that would be a future consideration in a future workshop. These clamps here are still just hanging around, they've got no permanent home at the minute. Um, I am hoping to sell my aluminium clamps over there, in fact I have sold them on eBay but I'm just waiting to sell out um, delivery and payment for those. I've also got those there I'm keeping for the time being. I don't know where my saw horses will go. What was that? Yeah, I don't know where they're going to go next because if I have no garage, I've got no room for them. So I won't keep them in the house. That's going to be a strange one. Then we have the big bandsaw. A beautiful machine capable of doing so much with wood. But the practical side of it is a pain in the ass to move. Which is why I think I just sell it and take the cash, really. I can get quite a good fee for it, I reckon. I could then invest that on other things like household stuff. Boring. 
Yeah, and above this, I've still got this um, storage area with loads of wood there. I've tried working through all this in the last year. It's just treated softwood mostly. I've done, I've made some ground there. So I've got a lot of wood to clear. And beyond that, there's other bits and pieces like junk. Um, there's actually an old spray, or that spray station I want to sell somewhere in the depths down there. I must dig it out sometime. Coming down the right hand side, I've got my mitre saw still, and behind that, my wood rack's looking a little scarce actually. They've been busier than this. But I'm glad I've slowly worked through some of this stuff because I don't want to waste it. One of my big thoughts and fears is what I'm going to do with all this wood. Um, do I just bash it up into species like a batch of oak, a batch of ash, and just sell that individually, or do I try and stash it somewhere? Again, that increases the cost of self storage potentially. But yeah, the mitre saw. I think the station's too big to take with me wherever I go. I do like the saw, but again, it's something. This model's quite a few years old now, and has been. It's almost redundant, not redundant, but it's been replaced by a, a newer model with uh, laser line and shorter guide rails at the back. So I probably get one try quite cheaply on eBay if I had to buy a second one again. But the station, it's yeah, it's it's gonna. Add to the storage space required, and I think it's unnecessary, really. Now my workbench, six foot long, uh, seven hundred mil wide, and about three foot deep, tall even. I don't know. I would honestly quite enjoy making a new one sometime. Um, is it worth me keeping this, or at least stripping it down to save the parts? If I did that, then at least. I have something to work from next time, or I'd have less of an incentive to sell this, less of an appeal for a buyer, you know. I recently finished up these drawer bases after several years of frustration. I got rid of the old bendy ply and put some time through boards in there, which is quite nice. It's working quite well. I recently started making use of this area here for hanging a few tools, squares and things. It's handy when I use it. When I remember to use it, when I bother to use it, like this lot here. Yeah, this wood rack, wood storage bin thing, it used to be over this side where the bobbin sander is now. But I found I was using that a lot less than the sander. So I made a little switch there. Most of those screws and nails and things I reckon I just give them away on free cycle because they're not worth very much. And I'm sure others would use them more freely than I would in the future. The ladder will stay. I need a ladder. We all need a ladder. I don't know where it will go, but it falls down quite to about that height eventually. So I could go somewhere, I could throw a cloth over it and make a little table or something out of it, I guess. Or a stool. This toolbox here, it's full of Ryobi tools, 18 volts. There's five of them running off the same batteries, and I've recently just sold it on eBay, so at long last, that one's going. Thank goodness. There's still a consistent mess behind, on top of this fridge freezer, freezer even, chest freezer. Uh, yeah, transformer, router is 110 volt. My mortiser, I've got to keep this machine, it's an absolute beauty. I paid a bargain price for it on eBay, it's made of solid cast iron throughout most of it. I just I just can't part with it, it's, <laughs> it, it's so heavy I've got to break it in two to move it on my own. But it's it's worth keeping, definitely. And again, this thing as well, the Workshop 3000. My favourite tool sharpener of all the things I've tried over the years. It's my number one. And I actually think it would look quite well in my kitchen. Just, you know, sat by the sink, sharpen a knife. It's there. Because I am, of course, keeping my hand tools and most of my power tools as well. So I need something to sharpen with, of course. Uh, the pillar drill. I bought this three, three or four years ago. Again, for a bargain price, I quite like it. It's there's nothing too special or unique about it, but you know, it's the price I paid and the fact that it, it suits me quite well. I like to put that somewhere in self storage, I guess. Um, these extractors are very common. You can find several similar ones with a different brand name, so that can go. It's 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 expend expendable. Is that the word? But yeah, I'm not 
hanging on to it too much with any sort of sentimental value or anything. My router table then. Um, I made this. I made this last year, about a year ago actually. Uh, I, I would like to keep it, or at least the router inside. But then, would someone buy an MDF table that someone else has made? Especially when the top is all over the place and not very flat. But it works, and if I can afford the space with a few other tools as well, then yeah, I'd like to keep it. Of course, I could throw a few things down there as I have done to save on storage space. That all helps. And the popping sander, yep, I cannot part with that. Again, another bargain purchase a few years ago. I just know that if I bought one second hand or new now, I'd never pay the same price again. So I've got to keep that one. My well, thicknesser, well, it's actually a planar thicknesser. It's very good as a thicknesser. Um, but I think, again, it's. I don't really need it that badly. Um, I bought it brand new, so the price is negligible. I could just buy it a second hand one sometime if I had to. But I could buy a different brand, a different model for a thicknesser. It hasn't got to be that one. Of course, I've got the cast iron playing tables down under here with the fence doing absolutely nothing. So I'm sure there's someone out there who would make better use of it. This is, of course, my main planer for surfacing and jointing edges. Again, another bargain push for me, but last, was it last year? It was. Last April I bought this. And it, having these two machines now has made such a big difference to my layout and everything. It's, the efficiency has just improved and... Yeah, I can't part with this one. It's got to go with the pillar drill and mortise, so... I've got to keep it. That's just how I feel. And some more wood behind there, MDF. More MDF and sheet materials. One thing I'd like to do in a future workshop is build a box around this miter saw because the dust just gets everywhere. All over the back, all down the floor in there, it's just, just horrible to see, horrible to clean up. Again, there's some more wood up here, this is my hardwood stash. Along with a few offcuts I keep in the roof space here. This part's never empty, I can assure you. And the same can be said for beneath my workbench. I've got a few bits here as well. I'd like to say I'll use it all up now before the end of October, November, but I can't promise that, unfortunately. So that's the workshop as it is at the minute. I'll sure be back again before I do say goodbye to this place. But generally I'm quite pleased with the layout I have now. It's kind of annoying because I've taken all this time. I've been here for the last nine years working on this and suddenly I've got it quite where I want it, but now I've got to kind of say goodbye. It's quite sad in a way. But I'm not saying goodbye to woodworking in general because I'll keep my interest going and I'll do what I can when I can. But it's going to be less convenient than it is now, I guess. One thing I do find about this space is it inspires me less than it used to. That might be relative, it might be something else that's actually causing that. But I just... You can see there are a few things here I don't need, I think. And having that whole kind of clustered feel with dust everywhere and that musty smell of damp and this it's... It's not inspiring, it's not helpful, I find. I do like the thought of starting again someday, somewhere else, a new workshop, starting afresh, just working on the the main building first, the walls, the floor, the roof, getting that as I want it before I start filling it with tools, because the natural temptation has always been to buy the tools first and do the work, then you know, look at the rest later. But that's It has its hazards and its downfalls, but we learned that through throughout the course of life. I just want to end this video now by saying thank you for watching. Um, please like and subscribe. I do have plenty more videos to upload for you on projects and things I've been making in the last few months. It's just a case now of when I can do that, the time I've got to have to edit them and upload them. It's quite demanding at the minute, but I will get through it all eventually. And I'll have more for you after that as well, I'm sure. I am thinking about where my channel will go sometime next year because I want to keep my presence on YouTube going, but... Obviously without a workshop it's going to be harder to keep the good work going, so I'm thinking of different ideas I can do. If you've got any suggestions then, you know, please let me know. I'm thinking of maybe something to do with walking and being outdoors, I quite enjoy that at the minute. I'm also into kind of writing, creative writing, fiction, but again it's hard, I think it's hard to share that in a video, so 
I'm thinking more along practical lines and that sort of thing. But again, thank you for watching and I'll be back again soon.